dear friends, colleague, comrade, wherever you are, whenever you are, I greet you with all the nice greetings that you like. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I pray to Allah that each and every one of you is living a prosperous, tranquil, and peaceful, stable, sustainable life. Amin, 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 amin. Today we are discussing the 21st episode in English of What Father 5 to 5, raising 63 questions to the leader. The leader could be a president, could be a king, could be a queen, could be a prime minister, could be a minister, could be a school teacher, could be a community leader, could be anything. But mainly today we are focusing on the political leaders, on the political leaders, okay? And let me thank my colleague Aya who prepared the, uh, the slide uh, show for you, who sometimes disagree with my opinion telling me that uh, sometimes we know that what you are saying could be good, but it's useless because nobody is listening. Nobody will do what you're talking about. But my response to Aya and to young people like Aya is, my duty is to deliver my belief and put it on the table for you. Whether you take it or not, it's entirely up to you. But I cannot meet Allah before delivering all my thoughts and the idea on the table for the generation to come. All right, there's a big question, which is constantly repeated numerous times by young people like you, who are frustrated, disenfranchised, and excited, who are searching for the truth, and could not be able to find logic and reasonable answer for such a question. When and how they judge the leaders? When and how they make the leaders accountable? And how can they say that this leader is a criminal, is a corrupt, is a fraud individual, or is an innocent, good, dedicated leader? You know why? Because of the surrounding, because of the different, diverse, and could be conflicting origins of their thoughts. Now everything is conflicting. They hear from there, here. They keep hearing things contradicting one another, ideas, ideology, opinions from different scholars and learned people. When we have many intellectual jurisprudential paths, many of them having different visions for those who are claiming knowledge, experience, and acquaintance, this will happen. The young people will be lost, the young people will be frustrated, disenfranchised and hot-headed. Why? Because the state or the government left the whoops, cowing and squawks of a political media presenter to be in charge, spoke loudly. Make the opinion makers would be jailed, what's happening nowadays as I speak, tortured, punished or sent to exile. We find that the ink wells of framing, deduction, argument, and the opinion extraction will become dry. Because no more discussion, no more opinion, no more interaction between those people. The jurists, scholars, and learned knowledgeable people will be prevented from expressing their opinion where to the public. The manliness, variety, and manners disappeared, alas, vanished. And we, at that time and this climate, bury chastity, shroud pride, and dignity disappear as well. When we have this, and moreover, you will never find an answer for your question how can you make this leader accountable? and he is or she is a corrupt individual, fair individual or not. I'm going to take you to a system building to live with you over the coming few minutes 
in how to follow a system before starting criticizing a leader or a minister or a king or whatever it is. You know this building in front of you? Built by one of the most magnificent uh, uh, civilization on earth, which is the Inca tribe in Peru and Latin America, Mexico and Peru. And you can see the stones, there's the straight lines, and the stones need to have to be built in an angle. Highly technical, architectural, beautiful building stands there for hundreds of years because it's anti earthquake uh, mechanisms. So they build this to absorb the earthquakes. And this is also on the top of the mountains, build these villages. And you can see beautiful villages being built there. So they show you young people before questioning your leaders, you have to go through a system to build how you can you question them and how can you make them account accountable and how can you prove that they are innocent or criminal. Those people who built all these beautiful buildings were not qualified from Harvard, Paris, Cambridge, Oxford, Cairo, London, Islamabad. No, no. They were just genius individuals who created the system and protect the system, and the system created its product for you. A system that you need to break. And there is also another building with a different system. When we talk about the system, I'll take you to a journey, a very short journey inside the Holy Quran about animals. Four surah in the Quran mentioned with the names of animals. One of them, the surah of the cattle, al-an'am. The second surah is the surah of the cow, which is the second chapter, the largest surah in the Quran. The third surah is naml, which is uh, ants. The fourth surah is the bees, which is a nahl. Regarding an'am, let's talk about the flock of animals. I'm not talking about it because they're not talking about system there. Regarding the cow, the cow is not a, 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 a building, a, a system building individual, but actually the community build its system around the existence and the product coming out from the cow, the milk, the meat, the skin, and everything. But for the other two, the smallest ones, which is the bee and the ant, Allah give them the name of the surah because of the magnificent, incredible, meticulous, waterproof system they created. And he's telling mankind like you and me, please listen and look and learn how the ant and the bees are creating the system. I beg you, don't go to those leaders haphazardly, emotionally excited, without following a proper structure system to prove that they are innocent or they are criminal. Before we go to discuss my 63 questions, which I think they in four strands or four paths, one of them is the economical, political, social, and civil liberty. Let us see who is the responsible, who is the leader? It's either of two things. Either he is somebody that you elected him, you chosen him or you chosen her to lead you, or someone who imposed himself or herself on you, like what's happening nowadays, especially if the military make a coup, as we have seen in Guinea and other places recently. Okay. But the function of these people who are responsible is to ask, to answer the question. And the function of the citizen is to be asking the question. So you and me have to ask their job, their job, their job has to answer. Okay, as I mentioned before, uh, that actually could be anybody. One of the most important criterion for such an individual is to satisfy his or her citizens. And citizen satisfaction is an unachievable goal or target. Please, I'm just saying it again, do not judge any official, whether the king or a queen or a president or prime minister or others, through your own your feeling, your emotion or speculation, but instead observe their performance and their government performance through the 63 points which I'm going to mention to you later on. 
each one of those responsible people have a honeymoon period. Could be a month, could be three months, could be six months, could be a year, could be more than a year. Till you discover whether they are honest or they are corrupt. Let us go and through the system, let us discuss the four paths, which I mentioned to you. The first path is the economical field. Ask a question related to the economical field, which has about 18 questions. First question, look at the value of your local currency against the international currencies and monitor it every week or every month. It's number, I'm not going to tell you right or left or center, no. Just keep, regular, keep, keep regularly observing it. Look at the increase or decrease of the number of the employees, the government employees. Are they creating jobs to employ more people or not? Look at the rate of unemployment every six months, or every three months, or every year. Look at the value of the internal debt, which the debt has been borrowed from another, another government department, or the external debt or the foreign debt, which is debt coming out from foreign countries or from World Bank or from International Monetary Fund or others. Number five, look at the state ranking among the other states globally on different social service fields of the work. Number six, look at the number of newly developed what? Factories, manufacturing factories, companies, ports, agricultural land, and others created by the government. Look at the expansion, expansion and the productivity of the agricultural land and the green silos, and the number of warehouses and deep freezers and fridges being built to save and keep the agriculture or animal product. Just look at the statistic number, the statistic figures. Number eight, look at the sufficiency of the local products you produce from your country to the local needs. Is it sufficient or you have to keep uh, Importing from abroad. Look at the monitoring of the informal economy, which is the cash in hand mostly economy, and the indigenous informal, and the actually uh, uh, formal economy, which is the companies, the factories, and 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 and. Look at the salaries of the government employees and compare it with the value of the purchasing power. You might be taking in certain countries, if it's real or lira or uh, dirham or pound or whatever you call it, it might be, it might not be sufficient to purchase commodities for you, or might not be sufficient for you for more than a week or two weeks in the month. There's also corruption indicators. Look at them and examine the corruption indicators. And there are many, many international companies, uh, uh, sorry, agencies talking about corruption, level of corruption in, in each country. Number 12, the commodity prices and the availability in the market. Are they increasing the prices or decreasing? The growth of community markets. Are we making a new community market to strengthen the informal economy or not informal directly and formal indirectly look at the value of taxation customs duties on goods look at the foreign companies coming to you and factories coming to you are they confident enough in your economy in your political status so they come every year in tens or hundreds or no nobody's coming Number 16, look at the ability, the citizen, the ability to own property. Will the citizen be able to buy their own flats, their own land, their own house or not? Look at the spinster, spinsterhood. How many young people are not able to get married? Whether male or female. And the divorce rate as well inside the country. Look at the military and security, transparency, their budget. Do we know how much they have and how much they declare or not? 
and the others, others. There are 18 points discussing the economical field. You can add more or less, but don't judge people on the economical ground before you put these questions and you get the facts and figures from what you find on the government uh, uh, records. The, the second path is freedom, democracy, and civil liberty. I raised 13 points or 13 questions. First question or points, number of political opinions, theological, economical detainees. Look at how many people are detained or put in jail every year, detainees especially. Look at the number of newly built or refurbished prisons or detainees cent detention center. The government will declare that and will tell you we invest this billions of pounds or say a billions of dollars. Look at the rising or decreasing numbers of civil society organizations. Are they allowing registration and empowering new civil society organizations, unions, syndicates, coalitions, human rights organizations, as well, as well as others, or not? Look at the rising or declining numbers of the independent, effective political parties. They might have two or three parties or 20 parties as paper parties. Look at the power, sway, and the influence of what? Of intelligence and security on the civil liberty, on the government itself and the institutions. Look at the civility of the state. Is the state and the state institution are civil or security led or military led? Look at the military interference in the civilian life. I always say that the military and security have, uh, not noble, have a divine message, divine function, holy function, holy message, because they are the protector of the community, the society, the citizens, the country from the enemies outside or the criminals inside. But once they go down the drain by going to become profiteering from people, this means there's something wrong in the system. Measuring and recording the indicators of what? Pioneering? Invention? Huh? in different aspects of social life. Discoveries as well. The credibility and trustworthiness of, of the addressed media message, uh, messages to the public. You look at the state media, what they say everything, every day, and compare it with other information, other information, and see if it's credible or not. Look at the citizen's assurance and their closeness to the government or not, or they are just turning their back to the government. All this will let us to look at actually uh, the freedom, democracy, civil liberty, and the space that every citizen is enjoying by himself or herself. So they have now how about 31 points to be raised, 18 on economical field, 13 in uh, freedom, democracy, and civil liberty. This is the image you should draw about the president or about the king or about the minister or about the prince or about whatever you call it. Any one of you could look at him or her. Some of you told me there's a clown in Istanbul, Bahlul in Istanbul, and others. It, for me, it doesn't make any difference. This was my expression about the combination of the formation of such a leader. Uh, the third path is social services. 17 questions or 17 points. 18 in the economic field, 13 in the civil liberty field, and 17 social services. This to put on the table for the government officials. Number one, 
number of new rebuilt hospitals, health centers, laboratories, and even refurbished and developed by states. Built or even developed. Number two, numbers of newly built schools, faculties, colleges, universities, research institutions every year. Where are they? Local, I mean national ones, not, not the, the ones who come to suck the blood of the country. Look at the availability of clean, suitable, effective water supply and sanitary systems needed for every citizen. Look at the quality of transportation and the cost of transportation. Look at the road quality on the village level and city level. Look at the intention here after a year or two or three, the intention of the state or the government to implement effective social justice or just Sweet nothing. Social justice to protect the citizens' dignity and rights. Number seven, look at the decline or rise of the crime rate. Crime rate in the country. With different kind of, 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 of crimes. Look at the availability of the essential commodities needed by the public. Are they available or not? Like milk, like medicine, like flour. It's very essential. Like oil. Look at the level of services provided by the elderly, for, by, provided for the able to, to the elderly. Provided to the elderly, to the people having special needs, to the destitute, displaced. Abandoned children, prisoners, and detainees. What kind of service that will provide them with? It's number 10. Look at the state international ranking. Again, ranking in the, in, in, in the economical, ranking in the social as well. Ranking in the civil liberty as well. The ranking again. The state international ranking amongst other states in providing fee, uh, uh, in providing uh, uh, in providing different fields of social services like education, health, water and sanitation, food, transportation, corruption, employment, and others. Education, health, water and sanitation, food, transportation, corruption, employment, and others. Look at the environmental and the climate protection, 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 protection. Community cleanliness. Providing rubbish collection utensils or containers. Waste recycling and others. Increasing the green areas in the country. Increasing the, the green belt between every city as well. Look at the traffic and transportation accident. The rate of traffic and, and, and transportation accidents. Look at the death rate in the country and the age of the dead people. Look at the rise or decline of suicidal rate. I remember people at the time of the opening of the school year commit suicide, parents, because they could not be able to buy a new pair of shoes for their children in certain countries, or the school bag, or trousers, or shirts. Look at the rise or decline of what we call it immigration, of whom? The young professional, the young politician, the talented, innovative pioneers, or the ordinary citizen. They want to leave, they can, can find the boat people, or the truck people, or the container people. This is the third uh, field of discussion, which is the social field.
The fourth field is the political system. We have 15 points or 15 questions. Let me start discussing it by making a statement, which I believe in it, as I earlier said, what the function or the job of the military and security are holy and divine. They should not dirt. They should not make their hands dirty by interfering in the local politics and uh, trades and others. Because they should protect this, the, the country and the city. That's my. So I'm not going to agree on military security or autocratic state because it leads to, uh, to, to creating the repressive torturing in human states. But what kind of question to ask in this political field? Number one, the numbers of independent effective political parties. Yes, we have political parties, but they are paper political parties. The independence of the state institution from the government. You might have a prime minister or a, a, a president who is on top of everything, which is wrong. How serious are we when implementing the governance issue, which is transparency, accountability, benchmarking, uh, uh, and others? The respect and credibility of the state by the international community and its invitation to high level strategic meetings. Okay, global meeting. Is inside the state or inside the country monopoly? Certain group, could be security, could be uh, uh, military, are in charge of everything, are in control of everything, and the rest of the people are not having any say in it, particularly in the area of drama, media, the media drama production, journalism, intellectual, cultural programming, promotion of certain values, publishing, productivities, literary work, arts, cinema, others, even food and its industry, even clothes and its industry, even land reclamation, even, even, is there any monopoly by any department in the government? We call it Supreme Department. Number six, who are in charge of different state institutions, municipalities, governors, districts, and the other government departments? Are they coming from what? From experienced professional background, is number one. In the relevant field of experience, are they closest to the government, I mean, to the president or to the ministers or to the king or to the queen? Closely. Are they from one faction or one political party or one group, or one clan? Okay. Are they diverse enough and they presenting different ethnic background, and faith background, and theological background, but having the experience and the knowledge and the professional background? have to ask you all these questions in the political field. Does the state believe in pluralism? Pluralism, yani instead of having one, we have plenty. Why we do not see more innovative inventing? Pioneering volunteers, because they are leaving the country, they are traveling abroad. They found their way in different places, different countries, where the civil liberty space is wider, much wider. Number nine, is there any gap between the government and its own people? Gap, negative gap. How deep and wide such a gap? Number 10, is the political discourse of the government geared towards the public or toward a certain faction? Have the parliamentary and legislative institution agreed on this political discourse? Or the political discourse is a diverse and inclusive? I have to ask you to look at the outcome of the political discourse and discuss it. Don't make any judgment without proof. 
How many social classes we have in the country? In the good old days, we used to have four or five social classes. Aristocrat, rich, middle class, يعني social class, and lower class, lower social class. Now we have two. In certain countries, we have only two. Two classes. The upper class of the served, served with ED, elites, and the lower class of the serving servants, the masters and the slaves. What are the political aims of the state? What, what is its aim and intention? Is A, blurring the feature of the religion. I found a lot of governments in certain areas are attacking their own religion and calling it close to terrorist religion, radical and extremist. So what do you want the non- the people in other government who have different religion to do to your own people. Especially the diaspora community live in outside the countries. Look also at selling the state's assets to foreign investors, such as lands, fixtures, installation. Look at all this for whose benefit and the transparency of gaining this money back to put in the state uh, what do you call it? Uh, budget or is going to certain people? Uh, selling lands, fixtures, installations, antiquities, historical monuments, ancient palaces, rivers, lakes, borders, even borders, islands, forests, scientific discoveries, innovative, inventive, pioneering methodologies. Even we sell our innovative, inventive, pioneering methodology. Arts, drama, poetry, films, human resource for resources, and others. Make a judgment on those, not on what you speculate. How, who, and where we examine and discuss the state constitution, and who's discussing it? Is the vision of one individual or one political party, or the collectives. The extent of nepotism amongst government officers, bribery amongst government officers and government partners, unfortunately. The rise or the fall of external migration, why people are leaving the country, why people are taking the risk to die in the middle of the sea, or to die inside a deep freezer or refrigerator of a truck leave the countries. Okay? Please, young people. Please, young people. Answer these questions. Make a system to answer the questions. Before make any judgment. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Hujurat 49, inquire first in case you should unwittingly wrong others and then repent of what you have done. My message to young people like you, I'm going to follow the discourse of the discussion between Musa and Pharaoh. Musa and Pharaoh of Egypt. Okay? I'm going to follow this. Because this issue is very complex and centered. And I'm going to divide this in seven or eight points. Point number one is the philosophical, philosophical introduction of the discussion between Moses and Pharaoh. We talked about the gradual and soft dialogue built by Prophet Musa السلام, when he was arguing with the Pharaoh of Egypt, gradual and soft. And he was supported, supporting his evidence by what? by fact-based finding, fact-based finding, fact-based finding. Let's start talking about point number A. Taking all necessary steps by Moses first. In and this in the Holy Quran mentioned uh, between verse 27, to, sorry, 26 to 79 of Surah called Surah Taha. 
26 to 2079 of Surah Al-Fi. Go to this uh, nearly 53 verses, you'll find this dialogue between uh, Moses and the Pharaoh. He said to Allah, Moses was saying, and is for me my task, and unite the knot from my tongue, that my brother increase through him my strength. No, no, no. Uh, so I don't know, I, I must align. And it's for me my task, and unite the knot of from my tongue, that they may understand my speech, and appoint for me a minister, assistant, from my family, Harun Akhi, my brother, increase through him my strength, and let him share my task, that we may exalt you much and remember you much. This is the dialogue between Allah and Musa, sorry, Moses and Allah, request. Asking Allah to give him his brother to support him. Number B in this philosophical introduction, the etiquettes of politeness when you discuss with Pharaoh, because Pharaoh is a tyrant, or was a tyrant. Allah told the Moses in this uh, verse, and speak to him with gentle speech, that perhaps he may be reminded or fear Allah. Yani don't go heavy handed. Number C, remember that I am going to be with you, Ya Musa, 24 7, hearing you and listening to you. Allah said to Musa, fear not. Indeed, I am with you both, you and your brother. I hear and I see. Message that Moses was going to discuss, he has to tell Pharaoh what he's going to discuss with him. Allah told Musa, go to him and say, indeed, we are messengers of your Lord. This is a statement. So send with us this is a message, the children of Israel, and do not torment them. We have come to you with a sign from your Lord, and peace will be upon the who, but he who follows the guidance. Yeah, the, the, the mission of Musa is to ask Pharaoh to let the children of Israel to go with him and leave Egypt. The methodology of the dialogue is number E and argument. Pharaoh said to him, so who is your Lord to, of you two? Moses said, our Lord is he who gave each thing its form and then guided. Pharaoh said, then what is the, the case of the former generations? Moses said, the knowledge thereof is with my Lord in a record. My Lord neither errs nor forgets. It is he who has made for you the earth as a bed spread out and inserted therein for you roadways and sent down from the sky rain and produced thereby categories of various plants. Eat therefrom and pasture your livestock. Indeed, in that are signs for those of intelligence. From it, the earth, we created you. Into it, we will return you. And from it, we will extract, extract you another time. This was to answer Pharaoh with logic about who is the Lord. <coughs> Then Pharaoh become furious. Ah, and was trying to, he was nearly losing the argument. He said, Pharaoh to Moses, have you come here to us, to drive us out of our land with your magic, Moses? How ah, is your magic? No argument. 
then we will surely, he's, he's actually threatening Moses, bring you magic like. So make between us and you an appointment, which you will not fail to keep, and therein, and neither will you, in a place assigned. Moses said in a very cool manner, your appointment is on the day of the festival when the people assemble at midnight, mid-morning. So Pharaoh went away, put together his plan, and then came to Moses. Moses said to them, to the magician, to you, don't invent falsehood. So they disputed over their affair among themselves and concealed their private conversation because they want to support Pharaoh, not Moses. They said, indeed, these two, these are two magicians who want to drive you out of your land with, your, with their magic and do away with your most exemplary. Why? religion or tradition. So resolve upon your plan and then come to agree. Forget about Musa and Aaron. Just work. have to support our Pharaoh. And he has succeeded today who overcome. They are promising themselves that the successful one is the victorious one is the one who will actually knock down the other group. Then they said to Moses, either you throw or we'll be the first to throw. Moses said, rather you throw. And suddenly the ropes and stuff they throw seem to him, to Musa, from their magic that they were moving like snakes. And Musa sensed it with himself apprehension and fear. But Allah, as he said, I am with you hearing and seeing. Okay. He said to Musa, fear not. Indeed, it is you who are superior Musa at this time of weakness and throw what is in your right hand. It will swallow up what they have crafted. What they have crafted is but the trick of a magician and the magician will not succeed wherever he is. So the magicians fell down in prostration they said, we have believed in the Lord of Aaron and Moses. Because the stick of Moses became a big serpent and swallowed all the so-called small snakes of them. The last two scenes in this action or this drama was collective punishment by Pharaoh to the magician and the last divine victory and divine punishment to Moses and to Pharaoh and his soldiers. Collective punishment. Pharaoh was furious and he said, you believed in him or in him. You believed in him, Moses, before I gave you permission. I indeed, he is your leader who has taught you magic. So I will surely cut off your hands and your feet on opposite side from here. Very painful. Very painful. And I will crucify you on the trunks of the palm trees. And you will surely know which of us is more severe in giving punishment and more enduring. They said the magicians told him, never will we prefer you over what has come to us of clear proofs and over he who created us. 
So decree whatever you are to decree, you can only decree for this worldly life. Indeed, we have believed in our Lord. In our Lord. That enduring that he may forgive us, that he may forgive us our sins and what you compelled us to do of magic. And Allah is better and more enduring. Indeed, whoever comes to his Lord as a criminal, indeed for him is hell. He will neither die therein nor live. And the last victory, divine victory and divine punishment came when Musa was crossing the sea. And we have inspired the Musa, to Moses. Travel by night with my servants and strike for them a dry path through the sea. You will not fear being overtaken by the Pharaoh, nor be afraid of drowning. Pharaoh pursued them with his soldiers and there covered them from the sea that which covered them. And Pharaoh led his people astray and not God. And Allah let save the Moses and the children of Israel. Then Pharaoh were following them with the soldiers and everyone was drowned. This was the philosophical introduction of the discussion or the argument with between the Moses and the Pharaoh. Point number two, you have to verify the news before actually believing in it. As Allah said in Surah Hajarat again, number six, all you who believe, if you if there comes to you a disobedient one with information, investigate lest you harm a people out of ignorance and become over what you have done regretful. Also verifying the information. Number three, give the leader a chance to prove himself before you judge him. I remember that in certain countries, they will only make 90 days. How can the 90 days, anyone can make any change? As I mentioned, the honeymoon of a president, the least could be one year. After one year, you start to question them. And 365 days, not 90 days. Don't post on your social media platform what is not true and documented by credible and reliable sources. Number five, individual action is good, but not good enough, even if it's led by a superstar. You have to go to the collectives, institutions, organizations, and make the coalition and make all your action research-based evidence, facts and figures. Number six, be prepared to develop your initiatives into an organization or to an institution or to research center and others. Don't stop at the level of having an initiative and that's the end of the story. No, take it further. Why? 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 To be able to raise citizen social awareness. The problem nowadays, the most difficult problem that many people are facing, many nations are facing, many states are facing, many countries are facing is awareness. Awareness, not education. Not every educated individual is aware of what's happening around them. To be able to raise citizens social awareness, and in particularly in the slums, in the squatter settlements and in the random areas. Why? Why I mentioned these three areas? Because it is the poorest areas, the most affected and least benefiting from social services, the most overpopulated and underdeveloped, having the highest unemployment rates, having the highest rates of social illnesses and crimes. It is the first target 
attracting the radical extremist terrorist groups as well as the bad corrupt security service men. Such groups and corrupted uh, officers will blackmail the residents to join or blackmail doesn't if they don't join, they join them, particularly the, the corrupt security officers. I'm not attacking the people who live in this area. No, no, it's not their mistakes. They are my family, they are my friends, they are my colleagues, but I'm attacking the system or the officials, the corrupt individuals in the system who led them to face this situation. That's why we have to look after them. Number seven, don't be preoccupied by organizing demonstration because demonstration is always infiltrated by bad apples, bad apples, rumors and others from security, from intelligence, from bad groups, from criminals and others. If you insist, you can make what we call it civil disobedience or civil unrest, like what Mahatma Gandhi was doing with the British in the uh, 30, uh, 40s of, of last centuries. Don't curse, insult, or make public mockery of the family members of the officials, like the wife, the daughter, especially the woman. This is not your standard. Establish and build partnership and coalition with everybody to protect your initiatives and enable to maximize your pressure on others to apply the principles of governance, transparency, accountability, benchmarking, credibility, and others. Number 10, don't rely on using uh, new social media outlets or platform only. Modern technology, no, but please, Use as well the old traditional methods of a com uh, communication were used by our previous generation. This will enable you to reach beyond what the anti-humanity groups realize. You will be reaching different cultural value-based and age groups from among the elderly, retired pensioners, housewives, disabled people sitting at home. They or they constitute a great part of our society that we should not underestimate its powerful impacts and what we call them the silent majority group. Number 11, please, for God's sake, young people, review your intention. Why you are you doing this? Are you doing it for personal gains? because you want to become a minister? Are you doing it for social glamour? Are you doing it because you hate a minister or you hate a president or you hate a king or a queen? Or you hate their ideology? Or you have a revenge with someone? Are you doing it because you want to support a certain group against a group? Religion against another religion? Sect against another sect? Political party against a political party. Number D, to advocate, or are you doing to advocate the rights of the poor and support their causes? Societal building, strengthening the independence of civil society and state institution, establishing the principles of civil liberties, social justice, fairness, and equality among us all says, what's your intention? Keep checking it. I'm not saying not to stand up, but keep checking why you are standing up for. Number E, please, are you seeking, doing it for seeking the pleasure of Allah or what? This is the intention part of it. Please, young people, identify your social direction and keep focusing on the deliverable of your objectives. I took you over the last nearly uh, 50 minutes, or more than 50 minutes. This social work that people, organizations, 
religious groups and armed groups, political parties, economical powers, and blocks, even different states are fighting over, are fighting for, and creating actual war or proxy wars to win it for themselves or for their groups. But if there is a war going to happen, you have to realize the consequences of having such war, which is destruction of your own countries, killing your own people, displacing the families, Losing dignity and and, and, and uh, losing dignities and uh, of uh, individuals, deleting and removing the history of civilization, the Renaissance, like it's happening in Damascus, in Baghdad, in Sana'a, in Cairo, in Tripoli, in Benghazi, and others, wiping out from the social institution memories the credible values. Morality and cultures, changing the genesis of the inherited genetical characteristics inside the blood of the generation to come. This is the outcome of war. And if you go to examine the impact, negative impact of the war in Yemen over the last six or seven years, the war uh, in Syria over the last 10 years plus, the conflict in Iraq, which is still not ending, and the war in Libya now, which is still in turmoil, I mean, there's a peace now, you will find some of this. Producing the end of time person. Who is the end of time person? This wars, if it goes on and on and on, will produce the end of time person. Who will be having no character, no values, manners, moralities, religion or shape. Unfortunately, this will be the outcome of what we call modern technological, conventional, chemical, biological, and nuclear wars. Be careful. If you are going to go this direction, this could be the consequences. Please quantify it before you go to this direction. But if you become the official himself or herself, the president himself or herself, the king or the queen herself or himself, okay, the leader, you have to be aware that you will be accountable to everything living, everyone living in your country. As the Prophet said, all of you are shepherds, and each of you is responsible for his flock or her flock the teacher for the students, the servants for the house, the husband for the family, the wife for the property and the family of the husband and the leader for the whole nation. Do you understand and realize what it means to be a shepherd? It means you'll be responsible for what I'm going to mention to you now. The people, the birds, the animals. Okay, the fishes, the insects, the vermin, the water, the seas, the rivers, the climate, the acids, the natural resources, the history, the culture, and the values. Not only that, but you will be required to create the suitable and effective programs that can protect, sustain, the, and sustain the lives and the existence of all these creations. Because for you, they are your flocks, and for them, you are the shepherd. And this is what Omar said when he made himself responsible for the mule in Iraq. He said, if the mule of Iraq in Iraq have a rough ride, I'll be responsible for her. If you decided to walk through the avenues of this path, after realizing the magnanimity of its responsibility, following the principled, principled parameters of the Omari accountability theory, 
in the case of the mule's rights towards the state of Omar, then you have to make yourself accountable to yourself. You know what he said about himself? The Omari accountability theory. Judge yourself before you are judged. Weigh your deeds before they were they are weighed or they were weighed for you. Beautify yourselves for the grand exposition. On that day, your deeds will be exposed, whether good or bad. Not one secret of yours concealed. I will be with you, as I promised many, many times in the past for my talks, if you wish, to help one another, to help me and to help you. Carrying this magnanimous responsibility, I am ready, if you are ready, and I'm ready to be with you, inshallah. I thank you for being patient with me for nearly this, just nearly one hour. But I can go back again. The big difficult question to ask is how can you make a judgment on a leader, whether he's a king or a queen or a president or a minister, any leader. I'm, I divide it into four groups. Make 18 points it will be raised for, on a criminal field, 13 on uh, uh, 13 on democracy, 17 on social services, and 15 on the uh, uh, political, 63 points. You can make them less than that, but please don't make any judgment from an emotional reaction or false and, and uh, not uh, non credible information, because this will lead to conflict. And follow the path of Moses when he was arguing with the Pharaoh in his country in Egypt, before, even in spite of the fact that everybody knew that Pharaoh is a tyrant or was a tyrant, but Allah advised Moses to talk gently. To him. So I might remember or might be afraid of Allah and send the children of Israel with Moses. Jazakum Allah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. See you inshallah soon again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.